When first learning to draw, most people assume you need a very sharp pencil, and that means having a pencil sharpener handy at all times. Out of frustration, a lot of people turn to mechanical pencils, which are always sharp. Now, sharp pencils are good for two things. One, they create very fine, sharp lines. The other thing they're good for is very detailed, tiny finishing work. Now, there's drawbacks to sharp pencils. First of all, because they are so sharp, only a small part of the lead is actually in contact with the paper. That means it's very difficult to actually control the value of the marks you make. It takes a lot of fine control to make a lighter mark. And this is a 4B pencil, so it can go much lighter than this, but having a hard time doing it because the tip is so sharp. The other problem with a very sharp pencil is actually in shading. When shading with a sharp pencil it has a tendency to want to dig into the paper and leave darker marks and you get an inconsistent inconsistent shading, not very smooth. Now to correctly sharpen your pencil what you'll need are two things. First you're going to need a razor. These box cutters are great uh, they're safe, they're relatively inexpensive. You don't have to worry about cutting yourself. Uh, when the edge goes dull, you just break off a piece and you have a new piece coming down. The other thing you're going to need is some sandpaper. This is specialty artist sandpaper. It's a pad. You can rip off the pieces as you need them. Looks like 79 cents. It wasn't that expensive. But any sandpaper will work as long as it's a really fine grit you can just get something from uh, a hardware store now to sharpen your pencil what I'm going to do is first I'm going to get rid of this point I don't like the point now what you want to do is peel away the wood you don't want to cut into the lead of the pencil you just want to expose expose it you want to get piece of lead that's roughly a quarter of an inch to a half inch long showing without any wood around it. Always sharpen away from yourself because nothing worse than cutting your finger with one of these razors and not being able to draw. Now the sandpaper is for smoothing out. Um, getting rid of any of the harsh lines, sharp points, rounding off the tip. You can also use the sandpaper if you do need a very fine point to create one. Now for those of you that are obsessed with mechanical pencils there are alternatives. They're called lead holders. Relatively easy to find. Um, the lead as you can see is about the same thickness as what would normally be in your pencil and just works like a normal mechanical pencil. You can adjust the length on it. These are the easy lead holders to find. As you can see, it's got metal at the end of it. It feels a lot different than a pencil. My favorite lead holder is this one. It's a, made by Karan Dash. It's a fixed pencil 77. It feels a lot like a pencil. The weight and the balance is good. But these things are awfully expensive, around $20 each, and they're very hard to find. Um, also, the leads that go in these you have to find them at specialty stores. They come in packages, varying sizes. Um, you can get all the different hardnesses, but when it all comes down to you need a e different pencil holder, lead holder, for each hardness of lead you're going to be using in your drawing. When we first learned to write, we were all taught to hold the pencil similarly between three fingers near the tip. This is great. It gives you a lot of control for writing. Of course, it doesn't seem to help me so much because my handwriting is so messy. But it's useful for writing. Now, one of the drawbacks of holding the pencil so close is that you have a very limited range because it's basically your fingers moving the pencil around. It's limited to where you can actually draw, how far you can reach away. The other drawback is, is your hand is actually resting on the paper. Now, because your hand's resting on the paper, you're drawing, you're going to get smudges all over, you're going to get dirty. 
Um, nice helpful thing to have around is another sheet of paper to rest your hand on. And with your hand rested on this, as long as you don't move the paper, it's going to keep what's underneath it from smudging. Now since we're all used to holding the pencil like this, one of the first ways to introduce ourselves to holding the pencil a little better for drawing is to move down further away from the tip. Hold it further away from the tip. Now as you can see, I get a much further range. My wrist is now resting further away from where I'm drawing. And I can now involve my wrist more, not just rely on the fine muscles of my fingers. Another advantage of starting to move down the pencil is this will prepare you for painting when you're actually holding a brush, working on a canvas, you're not holding it down near the very, very tip. Probably the best way to hold the pencil for drawing is between two fingers, using a third finger as a balance and holding it like this. Now, the reason we sharpen the pencil this way is because we're using the side of the pencil, the edge of the lead, not the very point when holding the pencil like this. It allows us to get very large, wide strokes. You don't have to rely on itsy bitsy teeny tiny points. And because we can hold the pencil like this, we're not worried about rubbing on the thing, and we have very large strokes. We're using our whole arm, our wrist, and get very broad, wide, huge strokes. Not this little tiny, teeny tiny stuff. It's great for details, big strokes, great for mapping something in. To see what sketching is, first we need to see what sketching isn't. All right, let's imagine this line here is the edge or of a face. Um, it's something we need to draw. Now, a lot of people, when starting out learning to draw, they'll try to get it done moving nice and slowly and mess up. And let's try it again and erase. Um, mess up again, erase. This isn't sketching, this is wasting an eraser. Now, to sketch is a series of lots of little strokes and evolving, making those mistakes, getting them on the paper, seeing what's wrong, and slowly adding to them and getting it right. Now, so we were going to bring some science into this, and this is a complicated subject, but I don't want to go into too much detail. When the information from your eyes reaches the back of your head, one of the first processes it goes through in the columns in the back of your brain is edge detection. And these columns and nerves actually detect angles of edges. So an angle is a very important tool when drawing. So what we're going to do is look at this curve here and just kind of see that, okay, there's roughly an angle here, roughly an angle here, angles, angles. So these angles are good kind of starting points to start your sketch. The sketch is just started real lightly. Um, you're not worried about anything being right. What you're trying to do is get marks on the paper that you can slowly correct just using little small strokes, refining those original angles, trying to build up a curve, just using light strokes and as you can see slowly these little light strokes as they build upon each other um, a darker area comes in those what would be called mistakes are piling up on top of each other and giving reference points for where what you're actually trying to draw is going to be. Now as these reference points build up you can um, use a little bit more pressure and kind of finalize it. 